Uh, my name is Jan Heiligens. I'm a vascular surgeon from Tilburg, the Netherlands. With me is Professor Michel Reine. He's also a vascular surgeon from the Netherlands. And we're here to talk about smart EVAR. Um, Michel, uh, why active sac management or smart EVAR? Yeah. yeah, when we look at, at endovascular repair of aortic aneurysms, um, it was introduced about 30 years ago. And during all those years, the EVAR devices have significantly been improved. But still, when you look at the technology, um, we do encounter the same problems. So we're still talking about type 2 endo leaks. And these are not resolved and still cause problems. And on top of that, um, it recently became apparent that patients with a shrinking aneurysm do better um, when compared to those with a stable aneurysm. And then we talk about reinterventions, aneurysm-related problems, but also all-cause mortality. So I think we are at the crossroad that we need to add something to um, our regular EVAR practice. And active sac management, where we fill up the complete sac, may well be the step forward. And Michel, you're talking about active sac management, but should we be do, doing more uh, preemptive sac embolization with coils, or is yeah. that a different ballgame? No, it's, it's, it's an option. It's an option. It's well known that when you, for example, uh, embolize your IMA before EVAR, that you get better results with regards to both type 2 endolytes, but also shrinkage. The problem there is that it takes a lot of time, um, and therefore it's costly. Uh, it also will give you a lot of radiation burden, so it needs to become easier. Well, then you can embolize the entire sac with coils. It has been done as well, and it has been shown that uh, with that you can reduce the number of type 2 endolytes, but you cannot really avoid them. Mm. And the failure mode is in those aneurysms that are not completely filled. So 100% filling seems to be the driver for success there. And that's why I think we need other materials. Okay, interesting. So Jan, could I ask you, why did you take interest in the AAA shape study study? Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that both you and I um, are looking for uh, better results, so to speak, with EVAR, as you explained earlier. Um, let's say a decade ago, we, we started with an alternative, uh, alternative technology on, on uh, SEC management, uh, which Partially has been successful and the rest is history, so not su that successful, but we've learned a lot from it. Um, for example, um, there is this tendency to think that there is um, a results on cardiovascular issues, uh, mortality, and that taking care of the uh, sac um, interferes with that and has positive outcomes if you can do so. So that's why we're interested. And so far with the uh, shape memory medical um, uh, plugs that we implanted and doing EVA, we've seen very nice results and uh, we're very curious, of course, to see more results but because we need more robust data, I think. So, Michel, we're here at the VEAT meeting where you present the one-year data of the first in human trial. Uh, tell us more about it, please. Yeah, what we did in the first in human trial is that we enrolled 35 patients um, in New Zealand and the Netherlands. In fact, there were two trials that were combined into one. Uh, and all these patients were treated um, with a regular EVAR procedure in conjunction with active sac management using the EMP DevX uh, rapid fill devices. What we've seen in that trial is that there were no major adverse events related to the product or to the sac filling technology. The technology itself had been published this year, earlier this year, in the JVS CIT. Um, and when we look at sac regression, it seems to be higher than we uh, see in regular EVAR. When we look at the diameter measurements, we see that about 60% of our patients do have sac regression at one year. And we look, when we look at volume, which is more sensitive, um, it's about 80%. Yeah. Interesting that you mentioned volume, Michel. Can you yeah. um, say more about that? Yeah, I think volume is, is going to replace diameter measurements. Um, it's more difficult to perform, but I think it's more sensitive in, in how an aneurysm responds to treatment. Um, in time, more software will become available, so it'll become more easier, and then it will replace the simple AP uh, measurements. Yeah, that makes sense, because yeah. It's, yeah, just measuring AP is exactly. it's not yeah. the way to go. Probably. Yeah. yeah, so when we look at the, the results, um, they are now under review for uh, publication, and hopefully they'll out soon. Okay, crazy now. Yeah. So to conclude, I think both Michel and I are very excited about this new technology and with the early results. Um, of course, we need more robust data and therefore we will participate in the randomized controlled trial. Um, it's initiated in the U.S. and there are some, uh, there are a few outside U.S. centers. It's being led by Dr. Sherma Horn and Dr. Patel and Dr. Milner are the co-PIs of this study. Uh, we really look forward to it and um, happy to bring more data in the future, I think. 
And I think we're living in very exciting times about Evar and the new solution for active site management.